you talked a, a lot about the, your particular method in terms of working with communities. There's not uh, there's a trust component. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that you are able to validate ideas as they come to you? So now as people make pitches and uh, communities want to get the support of your trust, wh what are some things that you look out for? What advice would you give to some communities that might be listening now? Like how, how do you validate ideas that are presented to you? Yeah. Um, so we have four family values. So our family values are transparency, compassion, um, collaboration, and urgency. So sometimes people will go, gosh, Dilnaz, you're like, you talk so quickly. You're like always on the go. And I was like, I think every Muslim American is um, has a sense of urgency. I don't want to change the world, inshallah, in 10 years. I want to change it tomorrow. I think about the head and the heart. And we're, they're only about one foot away, right? But I want to use my head and I want to use my heart. And I want to make sure there's a change tomorrow. The longer we wait, the more individuals will suffer. And I want to make sure the suffering, um, which is part of this world, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, but I want to minimize it as much as possible. And if there's something we can do, is I want to make sure we do it with a sense of urgency. So I think urgency is definitely one of those issues. The next thing is transparency. It is very open and honest conversation between the funder and the fundee, making sure that the funder says clearly, I would like, you know, regular reporting. I would like to have regular conversations. I would like whatever the funder wants, he or she is making sure that conversation is had up front. It's really important for the fundee to say, yeah, I'm so sorry, we can't do that. That's not with our, within our wheelhouse. The more you have those on, honest conversations up front, the easier the relationship will go. The next thing I would say is collaboration. There is no need for Muslim communities, Muslim um, nonprofits to, to be doing their work in their silos. Something that I've learned about nonprofits is number one, they're really working with a lack of time. Everything has to be done tomorrow. Grants need to be written tomorrow. Everything needs to be like looking perfect tomorrow. So they're working with a lack of time. Nonprofits are also working with the lack of funding. They just don't have the funding. They're constantly looking where's the next uh, you know, funding going to come. The next thing about nonprofits is um, a lack of innovation. It's always you know, this is what we did 10 years ago. This is what we did 30 years ago. So they can't be innovative because innovation requires money and it requires time. They don't have money, they don't have time, so it's hard for them to be innovative. And the last thing, especially with Muslim-led nonprofits, is we're understanding they're dealing with Islamophobia mm -hmm. as well as internalized Islamophobia. As Muslims, sometimes we beat ourselves up. We don't think we're good enough. So how do we make sure we build our self-confidence in our organizations, but we also make sure that the larger world knows the great work we're doing? 